So raised beds can be a lot of work when you first build them. However, once you get the initial work done, they can make the rest of your gardening a whole lot easier. Now, I've gotten a lot of questions over the last couple of years since I've built my big beds on uh, exactly what process I took to build them. So today, I figured I'd kind of give you a quick run through on what I did to build these beds that are 24 feet long by four feet wide, and they're made out of wood and corrugated metal. So we'll take you through the process and kind of show you what it's all about. To start, I cut my four by fours in half. These are eight foot long four by fours, so that I have four feet uh, per one of the four by fours that I use in the bed. This gives me the t basically two feet that I can sink into the ground to give me support as well as give me the 26 inches needed to attach the corrugated metal tube. The corrugated metal panels that I'm using are 26 inches wide by 8 feet long. I then notch out my 4x4s and I just measure down the 26 inches so I know where the bottom's going to be. And then I use a uh, just a piece of 2x4 to make my measurements on for the width and the depth of the 2x4. I just use a saw saw to start cutting out and the notches that I need. I do one on either side and then I do a third cut uh, just inside maybe a few inches or a couple inches actually uh, that's wide enough for my saw blade to fit into. Once I've got those three cuts in I use a chisel and a hammer and I notch out that smaller section where I just made the two cuts as you can see here. Normally once you get a, a few clicks in there it pops right out. Once I've got that smaller part removed then that gives me the ability to put my Sawzall down in there and start cleaning out the section that I've marked off to make my notches where my 2x4s will fit into. Once all the 4x4s are notched out, I lay my 2x4s into the notches and I use another smaller piece of 2x4 to mark the ends for uh, where I want, uh, you know, to give me enough width there to fit the next board into and then I screw those in to the 4x4s. Then I lay out the sheet of the corrugated metal and get it lined up so that I can attach it and I just screw them into the 4x4 sections and normally I put one screw in every other divot there in the corrugated metal. That seems to give enough support. Once the first section is together, then I'd bring that down to the garden area. I find it easier to do it in 8 foot sections than trying to do the whole 24 feet at one time. I just assemble each 8 foot section in the garden once I have them put together. Then I get it lined up to where I know where I want it to go into the garden and line it up so that the 4x4s are matched up where I want to dig the holes to sink them into into the ground. Once I have it lined up, then it's just digging out the post holes. For a 24 foot long bed, it is seven, uh, seven posts that you have to dig out per side. Once the holes are dug, I sink up each side into the holes and then I attach one end of the bed, but I leave the other end open to allow me to bring wheelbarrow loads of dirt to dump in. It's much easier than doing it one shovel at a time. Also, just for some additional support, about three quarters of the way up the sides of the bed at each 4x4 section, I attach this metal strapping. This is the same 
strapping that plumbers use to hold pipes up. So it should last a while and it just seems to give a little bit more tension to prevent the sides from bowing. I don't know if this is really necessary with each post sunk in the ground 24 inches or so, um, but it makes me feel better. So you decide on what you want to do. But I attached to one side and then pulled across and then screwed into the 4x4 on the other side. And you get a pretty good amount of tension to hold it up. So once I finish filling the beds with the dirt and I get kind of down near the end, uh, I will put the end, the final end piece on and then I will come down with the wheelbarrow and top it off with a few final loads of dirt by the shovel full. Then I top it off with these uh, top boards here that you can kind of see that go right around the top and it just makes it easier to set a basket on, to sit on while you're maybe picking or, or doing a little bit of weeding. Um, and then it also it will cover the metal edge that you know might stick up in a few areas. Uh, plus it just looks nice overall. Um, once I get the dirt in here and I get things planted, I normally give it a week or two to let the soil kind of settle down in. And then I top it off with mulch, which will help uh, you know keep the, the moisture in so I have to water less and it also helps keep the weeds down. Plus it, Another thing that's uh, an aesthetic, it just looks nice overall. Overall, some of the benefits of building a raised bed after you get through the initial hard work of, of getting it through, of getting it built and filled, um, is that you know you don't have to bend over anymore to pull weeds. It's uh, especially with, with these that are 26 inches high, it's more at a waist level. When you're picking, as the plants grow up, you're picking more right here at your waist or higher level. Sometimes with the hoops that I put in, the, you know, it, it even, uh, you're picking overhead. Um, you're not crawling around on the ground anymore. You have more control over the type of soil uh, to keep it in one place. You have more control with your watering. Um, and you don't have to deal with some bad soils like we have here with uh, some heavy clay, which is, you end up, it's like you're growing in c concrete half the time. Um, now I filled these beds with uh, a 50-50 a mix of topsoil and composted uh, manure. I think it's horse and cow manure compost. Um, you can mix with uh, whatever you want. If you want to do a type of like hugel culture where you start off with um, leaves and, and sticks and branches to kind of start filling your bed and then top that off with dirt. Uh, that might save you some money if you're purchasing all your topsoil. Depending on the size of your bed, I wouldn't recommend necessarily filling it with bag soil from a big box store like Lowe's or Home Depot. You might want to look into a local landscaping company that can maybe deliver dirt to you um, and get it in bulk. It's, it's much cheaper, especially with a bed this size. This, these size beds took about nine cubic yards of dirt to fill because I didn't put any type of sticks or anything in, in the base. Um, so it's really up to you. There's a lot of different options. How big? You can do a 4x4, four four. you can do uh, 8x4, 16x4, or you know anything in between. With these I build in sections. It's a lot easier to do eight foot sections at a time uh, and I just love having these beds. The final thing that I did, and I got this from uh, Roots and Refuge, uh, website was to start using cattle panels for my trellising. It is the best trellising that I've ever used for tomatoes, peppers, beans, cucumbers, whatever I grow up at. Uh, all I do is I, for the, these middle sections is I get an eight foot long section and I just zip tie it to these tea stakes that just stick right down the ground. Um, for the hoops that you saw uh, on, I don't know if you can see it in this camera shot, but the hoops that I have going over the beds, those are 16 foot cattle panels and they just bend right over. I mean, it's, it's helpful if you have two people to do it because they get a little wonky when you're first setting them up. But again, I just bend them over, put them on either bed and then zip tie them to a tea stake stuck in the ground. And, um, I'll show you a picture of what our garden looked like last year with everything growing up on it. It really came out really nice and I'm hoping for the same result this year, which is why I put in a third bed. 
So I hope this video you found helpful to give you some ideas for building beds, uh, raised beds in your backyard. And I'd highly suggest uh, trying it out if you don't have good soil or just don't want to bend over anymore, um, build a raised bed. You won't regret it after you get the initial work done. So hope you all are having a good day. Thanks for stopping by. Subscribe to our channel. Namaste.